What is the similarity between a butterfly, a dolphin, a jellyfish and a leech? Well, they are all animals. But they are so different, right? That means the animal kingdom is really, really vast. In fact, the total number of animal species is estimated to be about 8.7 million. That's a lot. So how do we even begin to make sense of such a vast kingdom of organisms and how do we classify them? Fortunately, there are very simple criteria which helps us differentiate them into phyla. So the animal kingdom has several phyla, singular phylum and plural is phyla. So in this video, we will take an overview of all the phyla that are there under the animal kingdom and look at some very basic criteria that we use to differentiate between them. Now, if you're not very familiar with how animals are classified, you will come across the names of a lot of phyla, which will be very new to you. You will come across many unfamiliar names. Don't worry about remembering the names just yet. Just try to understand the basic criteria that are used to classify animals into these different phyla and you will get these names once you go through other videos on each of these different phyla. So one thing that is common between all animals and in fact all living organisms is that they're all made up of cells. You must have studied that cells make up tissues which gather together to form an organ and organs gather together to form an organ system and several organ systems together form an organism. So these are different levels of organization. But there are some animals, in fact the most basic of all animals, only have cells. They don't have the tissue or the higher levels of organization. They are that simple. That is the most primitive type of animals. And they are the sponges. So there are these animals, this, yeah, some of them are really beautiful like this one, that only have a cellular level of organization and they form the phylum Periphera. Periphera because they have pores in their bodies. That's why they are called sponges because sponges have pores, right? So these are the most primitive phylum of animals. Look carefully at this animal. Do you see any symmetry in their bodies? In fact, these animals are so primitive that there is no symmetry. So what do I mean by symmetry? Take the human body. So you can imagine a plane passing through the middle of the human body like this. So here I've drawn a line, but if you imagine three-dimensionally, it will be a plane that will divide the body into two equal halves. So that is symmetry. You can make a plane pass through the body of the organism, which will divide it into two equal halves. Bilateral symmetry is a type of symmetry. So this is bilateral symmetry. in which there is only one plane that can divide the body into two equal halves. There is another type of symmetry in which there are more than one planes that can divide the body in two equal halves. Like in this flower, it's, it's, it's a type of symmetry that is present in animals as well as flowers. So for example, take a look at this flower, you can have this plane divided into exactly two equal halves. Then there is this plane that divides it into two equal halves. Similarly, there are three more planes. So there are five planes that divide this flower into two equal halves. So this kind of symmetry where there are more than one planes which divide the flower or the organism into two equal halves is called radial symmetry. So the most primitive type of animals, the sponges, as you saw, they do not have any symmetry, but the next most primitive animals, they have some type of symmetry like our jellyfish over here. So a jellyfish can be divided by many planes into two equal halves. So the jellyfish belong to a phylum called Nidaria. The old name for it is Coelenterata, but this is the current name, Nidaria, the sea is silent. And there is another phylum just above Nidaria, which is made up of these marine animals. They also have radial symmetry and this is called phylum Tenophora. 
again c is silent they are also called comb jellies again don't worry too much about the names if you are seeing them for the first time when you read in more details about these phyla you will become more familiar with the names now these animals not only have some symmetry they also have tissues remember the phylum porifera the sponges they did not have any tissues all they had was cellular level of organization but these animals are a little more sophisticated their cells are organized into tissues and they had two layers of tissues when they were embryos so this is what they looked like this is called diploblastic diplo means two so there are two tissue layers in the embryo so i can see here three one two and three so what is the third thing we'll come to it in a bit first let's take a look at the two tissue layers the outer one is called the ectoderm derm means skin ecto means outer so it's the outer layer of the tissues and the inner layer is the endoderm endo means inner Now what is this white thing it's actually a space its position is innermost to all the tissue layers and that usually happens to be the gut the digestive tract of the animal now phyla nidaria and tenophora are diploblastic but animals which are higher than them they are triploblastic like over here so this is triploblastic means these animals had three tissue layers when they were embryos so the blue one again it's the ectoderm the red one is the endoderm there is another tissue layer in the middle called the mesoderm meso means middle so ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm are the three layers in triploblastic animals now in many textbooks and in videos you will find there is a layer that is shown even in diploblastic animals that is not a cellular layer okay so there's something called the mesoglea that you will find in some books that's formed by secretions by cells but it itself is not made of cells so that's not a tissue layer now animals which are a little more advanced than nidaria and tenophora are all triploblastic these animals are also bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic animals have a few varieties the first variety looks like this this is pretty much the same that you saw just now there are three layers ectoderm mesoderm endoderm then inside there is the gut so these animals the animals which have this type of arrangement of triploblastic tissue layers are called acelomate and why they are called so we will see in a bit so the phylum that comes under acelomates there is only one phylum like that and it's the platyhelminthes so this is phylum platyhelminthes platy means flat and helminth means worm so they are also called flat worms and this example right here is a tapeworm so tapeworm belongs to flat worms or phylum platyhelminthes and are acelomates the next type of triploblastic animals have something else besides the ectoderm endoderm and the mesoderm so here we have the ectoderm here is the mesoderm the red one is the endoderm now what is this blue thing that is something extra in these animals and this is a space now this space is not the same as the white one not like the gut it's a body cavity it's a cavity that is present between the tissue layers and that is important because it gives the body of the animal some firmness and some resistance to let's say you know blows so that it's not squished and it also is a place to hold internal organs and in these animals the body cavity is called a false coelom why is it called a false coelom we will again see in a bit so this type of animals are called pseudo coelomates because pseudo means false they have a false body cavity and the phylum th that has the false coelom is called phylum nematoda 
or Ascalminthes, the older name. They are also called roundworms because they are kind of cylindrical. And you might have seen many worms in your daily lives. You can see them sometimes in vegetables or in soil and stuff. Many of them are also parasites like Ascaris. So these are the nematodes or Ascalminthes. So now I hope you understand why we were calling the previous types of animals as acelomates. Acelomate because they did not have any coelom, they did not have any body cavity. That's why they were acelomates and these animals are pseudocelomates. So you must be wondering if there are animals with true coelom. Yes, there are. All the animals that are higher than these are true coelomates. They have a true coelom. So ectoderm, mesoderm, the red one is endoderm and the blue thing is the true coelom. So why do we call this the true coelom and how is it different from the false coelom? So the true coelom, it is present between, present within the mesoderm. So the orange one here, it is the mesoderm and you see the blue thing, the body cavity, the true coelom that is within the orange layer. So that is true coelom, whereas in pseudocelomates, body cavity was present outside the mesoderm. So here you see there is the ectoderm, the mesoderm, then the body cavity and then the endoderm. The body cavity is outside the mesoderm, hence it is called the false coelom. Another difference is in the false coelom, the false coelom is fluid filled, it's filled with a watery substance. Whereas the true coelom, it's, it's actually a space. Like for example, inside human bodies, there is a space which holds all these organs, the heart, the stomach and everything else. That is the true coelom. So these animals are called coelomates because they have the coelom. So what falls under coelomates? Well, all the rest of the animals. All the animals higher to the pseudocelomates are true coelomates and there are quite a few of these phylum. So first there is this phylum which has leeches. This is a leech and then it also has earthworms and it's called annelida, phylum annelida. Then there is the phylum with all the insects and spiders and scorpions and lobsters and prawns, crabs. This phylum is called arthropoda. Then there is the phylum with snails and oysters and octopuses and squids and this phylum is called mollusca. Next is the one with starfishes and are called Echinodermata. There is this phylum with these worm-like creatures which are found under the sea and they are called Hemichordata. And finally we have the most evolved phylum of all which has the dolphins, the monkeys, the birds, the fish, the crocodiles and us and is called phylum chordata. So let's just quickly go through once again what we saw in this video. So we start with the most primitive animals again. They only have the cellular level of organization and are the phylum porifera which has sponges in it. Then there are the diploblastic animals, the ones which have only two tissue layers in their embryonic stage and include the jellyfishes, phylum Nidaria, and these comb jellies or phylum Tenophora. Next, there are the acelomates, the ones which are triploblastic, they have three tissue layers in their embryonic stage but no coelom, no body cavity. And they include the platyhelminthes phylum, the flatworms. An example is the tapeworm. Then there are the pseudocelomates, which have a false coelom and include the phylum nematoda or ascalminthes and include the roundworms. An example is Ascaris. And finally, the coelomates, which have a true coelom and all the more advanced animals, phylum annelida, which has earthworms and leeches. 
phylum Arthropoda, which has insects, scorpions, spiders, prawns, crabs, and many other animals. Then there is phylum Mollusca, which has snails, oysters, squids, etc. Then there's Echinodermata, which includes animals like starfish. There's Hemichordata, with worm-like animals present in marine waters. And then there is the most advanced of all phyla, Chordata, which includes mammals, birds, reptiles, fish, and us.